Hey everybody. With the recent video I posted doing an up close look from the ground at a oil sucker recloser, I figured today let's go and do the same for a distribution transformer. So here is a pole mounted distribution transformer. Let this car get by first. Okay, so we're looking at the back side of it here, and this is a uh, electric co-op, so the transformer is actually the RUS style. It has mounting brackets on both sides, and the secondary taps are on the other side. We're going to start out by looking at the other side, actually. So, here is the side where the secondary taps are. This is a 25 kVA transformer. And okay, so here's a somewhat better look. You can see a little bit there. This is an Ermco transformer. Um, I've actually got a, a snapshot of a photo where we can better see the uh, nameplate. <clears throat> so this is a 12470 GRDY or grounded Y slash 7200 transformer. So the primary is 7200 volts. That comes in up through there. And now here we have 120 slash 240. So we have two 120 volt taps and we have a center tap there which is bonded to the can. And on the left there is a, uh, it's like a breaker. So this is what's called a CSP transformer, or completely self-protected transformer. So it actually has its own internal circuit breaker and it has its own internal fusing. That's why there is not a fuse cut out on this pole here. It's just um, hooked directly up to the primary. So <clears throat> this transformer has two um, grounding posts on it. Since this is what's called a grounded Y setup transformer. There are some transformers that have two high voltage taps. But this one has just one because it's for a grounded Y setup. And again, there are the center taps, or excuse me, the uh, the secondary taps. So this transformer could be used in one of two different ways, either as a single phase transformer, or could you be used in a bank, for example, a three phase um, Y setup, they would open this transformer up and they would change around the taps to where instead of having two separate 120 volt taps, you would have the two secondary windings in parallel with each other that way you're not wasting half the transformer sorry to interrupt but there is actually a third uh, method of using single phase transformers and that can be in delta banks and in that case in many cases what they'll do is they'll actually detach the center taps um, grounding strap from the can because in delta it's generally not used depending on the type of wiring configuration sometimes it is other times it's not so, this transformer serves two homes. It serves my home as well as a neighbor across the street. So, if we get a little different look here, having to watch for traffic on this road here. Look right up there on the side. That is what is known as a lifting ear or a lifting lug. So when this transformer is um, hoisted up to the pole, the line crews actually use those lifting ears to lift the unit. There's one on the other side. So, let me see here. You can see it right there. Here comes a car. Okay, let's head to the other side again. I'll show you the back side. Now, a regular transformer like what's used with other utilities that has just one set of mounting posts for the pole will generally have the secondary tabs on the opposite side but you can see these are a little different so up there is our high voltage bushing and on top of that is a, a bushing protector it protects the bushing from animals like squirrels and birds and stuff like that that could get up on top of the transformer and possibly make contact with the high voltage helps prevent nuisance outages and helps also prevent um, animals from getting injured. And right up there is a lightning arrestor. So what this does is it acts like a surge protector for the transformer. So in the case of, let's say, lightning struck in the primary, that high voltage needs somewhere to go, the ground, instead of going through the equipment. So 
in that case it would actually go through this arrestor you can see the arrestor is actually attached to the transformer can there's the other lifting ear right up here i believe is our pressure relief valve so if this unit gets over pressure for any reason it um, would allow that pressure to escape also it can be manually pulled to equalize the pressure so for example if the utility takes this transformer out of service and goes to service it before they open it they have to pull that to release any pressure that's built up or any vacuum that's built up inside the transformer to equalize the internal and external well pressures so transformers they don't really require much in the way of maintenance at least distribution transformers i mean usually they're hung there and they're they remain there for decades this has been there since 1985. Now, i should mention they they can be maintained so for example if a transformer fails for a reason it can be rebuilt it can be rewound all that good stuff um, or sometimes utilities just replace these things when they replace poles and this utility energy united is one that has done that and they i've been a little critical of them of replacing transformers like this that are in perfectly good condition that didn't need replacing but anyway so that is a look at a distribution pole mounted transformer now of course the other type is a pad mounted unit not really much to show on those because obviously they're locked up you can't actually see what's in them so actually I've decided to go in and let's take, let's take a look at a second transformer. Why not? So this is actually just down from the recloser that we looked at uh, like a week ago. So this transformer here is a little bit bigger than the other one we had just looked at. So this one here is a General Electric 50 kva transformer and again i apologize for the wind hopefully this is coming out okay up there is the data plate which has all the different information about the transformer man sometimes i think i live along a busy highway you'd think all these all these cars but uh kind of similar deal you can see we have our secondary taps there 12240. This transformer serves a lot more homes. At one time it was serving eight homes and used to serve my previous home. But uh, right now it's just serving five homes. So this one here you can see, you may be able to see, looks a bit older. You would think it's much older, but it's actually only a year older. It's from 1984. So not terribly, not that much older. So like the other transformer, we also have the uh, little breaker there. Again, this is a CSP transformer, so it doesn't need to have the fuse on the primary. Another car. But um, this is the back side of it. And up top, again, is a lightning arrestor. This transformer has had the lightning arrestor replaced back in 2012 and you can see the lifting ears they look a little different on this one and you can see the high voltage bushing up there as well as the bushing cap bushing cover so that is a look at a distribution transformer or two different transformers for that matter so let's go back inside and let's go ahead and talk a little more about this and what you would typically find on the data plate okay everybody so my original plan for this video was to just get video shots of the two transformers that corner my property here but I decided I needed to include this transformer as you're, that you're seeing right here for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is not an RUS style transformer. This is actually on an investor utility, Duke Energy. Um, also, this transformer is not a CSP type transformer. So if you look up here, you'll see that there is a cutout with a fuse in it. The fuse is actually pulled open because this transformer used to power my new home when I was at its former location. And this picture was taken right after I had Duke Energy 
disconnect the service. So this is a 15 kVA transform made by Howard Industries. And I'll show you something here. So you look at the secondary tap on the left here. That's not right. Um, this actually came loose and believe it or not, this transformer was still in service in this condition. Uh, not good. So that transformer there was definitely, uh, it definitely needed to be taken out of service and uh, repaired and replaced. So again, up there is the fuse cutout and up there is our primary. So let's see what else we have here for photos. Good. So right here on the side, you can see our data plate. Again, this is a Howard Industries transformer. 15 kVA. Now, our primary voltage here is 23.9 kV phase to phase, 13.8 kV phase to ground instead of 7.2 like we have here. But this transformer is compatible with three different primary voltages. So it can work with 7.2, 13.8, or 14.4. So there's actually a uh, tap changer on the back of this unit, which we'll see here in a moment. So this is look at the side, and you can see this transformer has the mounting brackets on one side and one side only, with the secondary taps on the opposite side, as you can see here. Now look at it. These were taken with my DSLR camera. You gotta love that spider web there. So up here is the primary bush, and you can see it's definitely larger because it's rated for a higher voltage. And over here is our lightning arrestor. And of course up there is the fuse cutout with the fuse opened. And up there is our primary. Okay, so here's the tap changer. So you can see it's set to 13.8 because that is the primary voltage, 13.8 uh, kV or 13,800 volts. And it's warned you to de-energize the transformer before operating the switch. And on this transformer, you can see there is our pressure relief up there. I believe it's a pressure relief. And down here is our um, ground to the uh, to the can. And you can see the. Uh, the uh, hoisting ears and there's one there and there's one on the other side so if we go back you can see there's one there and there's one there so that's a look at a little bit different transformer okay everybody so I figured we would end this video uh, by talking about a little bit of information that's on those uh, data plates so I, was, I went back and looked through my footage that is shot and got some pretty decent uh, footage of the data plate on the General Electric transformer but did not get so much good footage of the one that's on the Urmco transformer because of uh, wires in the way. So um, I actually have a photo I took two or three years ago. It was before this new home was put in because this new home um, they hooked when they brought in electric service for this new home they tapped off that transformer whereas the single wide that used to be here um, it was off the other one. So that Ermco transformer, it was sized to uh, serve three lots and my neighbor across the street. Uh, it's actually two lots. The second lot was never built on. And this lot here used to have a single wide mobile home. And I guess they didn't want to have an ugly overhead service going across the front of the home. So they went off the back side instead and tapped into the other transformer. Anyway, so on um, one side of this video, you'll see the uh, a screenshot of the data plate for the Ermco transformer and you'll see a screenshot for the data plate for the GE transformer. So the data plate has a lot of different information on it and I'm not going to go over every single detail in this video but first and foremost the more, most important thing is the uh, rate of voltage so both of these transformers are, are 12470 GRDY slash 7200 um, 7200 being the important one because that's actually what goes into the primary um, they are 120 slash 240 on the secondary so 120 slash 240 single phase service, like residential. Um, also, they have the size. So for example, the first one we looked at was a 25 kVA. The second one was a 50 kVA. And that is at a 65 degrees Celsius rise. So these transformers are filled with oil. Generally, it's like mineral oil or like baby oil. Baby oil. Um, some of them have like a silicone fluid in them. And generally, the data plate will tell you what it was filled with at the factory. For example, both of these, I think, state that they were filled with oil and that they contain like less than one part per million of PCBs at the time of manufacture. The data plate also tells you um, 
the windings that are in a transformer, whether they're aluminum or copper, for example, the Ermco has aluminum um, secondary, whereas it has copper primary, and the GE transformer has both aluminum on the primary and secondary windings. Also, you'll see that the transformer is either additive or um, subtractive polarity. I think both of these are additive polarity. That simply just has to do with how the transformer's windings were wound around the core. Um, there's a video I'll put in the upper right corner uh, from a different channel that goes over that really well. Um, you also have a schematic that um, shows the basically how the transformer is wired internally. Um, you'll have, of course, your primary, and you have an internal fuse on the primary because these are CSP transformers, and it goes over how the uh, secondary tabs are um, from the factory, and, and I think they also show an alternative for if you're using the transformer as part of a three-phase bank for like Y service. And you also have generally a serial number on the, of the transformer and sometimes you'll have the data manufacturer. The Aramco transformer does not have its data manufacturer on the data plate, however, the GE does. The Aramco actually has the date stamped on the bottom of the can. That's why I was able to determine it was actually made in 1985. The GE was actually made in September 1984. So not too much difference in age. This neighborhood, the, the lines I think were built in 85. That's at least the, the, that's the date on the poles. So Now I should note, I did mention about the oil and transformers earlier. Um, older transformers, like the ones from, let's say, the 1970s and older, some of those, and actually many of those, were known to have a fluid in them known as PCBs or polychlorinated biphenyls. It is a uh, human carcinogen and... That's why I didn't long use it because it's toxic, but it was a very good dielectric uh, fluid, and it was very commonly used in electric equipment back in the day. So you're probably wondering, okay, why is a transformer filled with oil? Well, um, not all transformers have oil in them. There are dry type transformers, but of course, transformers like what we're talking about in this video generally have oil in them, um, and it's there for two reasons. Number one, it's there as a dielectric or an insulator. The other reason is for cooling. So these transformers, of course, when you put a load to them, they get hot. And that heat needs to go somewhere. And the oil helps disperse that heat away from the transformer into the surrounding environment. So it'll transfer it into the, uh, the can, the can as a heat sink. And it's not uncommon for higher KVA rated transformers to sometimes have heat sinks on them to help better disperse that heat. So, it, oil is definitely a common thing in lots of electrical equipment. Um, it's also seen in voltage regulators, which are like transformers. It's also seen in reclosers, like I talked about in the previous video with oil circuit reclosers. It's there as a dielectric, and it's also there. It could say it's there for cooling, but it's mainly there for, as a dielectric for especially the contacts if it's, a, uh, if it's just contacts submerged in the oil. And that oil also acts as a hydraulic fluid for the reclosers. Um, counting, timing, and lockout sequencing. Anyways, that, is a, uh, that was a look at distribution pole mounted transformers. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video from QCareer Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel. That's QComp MTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for your support.